I was brought up to be a decent boy to live a good life. But fighting in the Second World War in Russia, I have taken part in so many horrible things. Crime against humanity in which I was collectively involved. It's very hurtful to be responsible for the deaths of totally innocent people. It would drive me mad if I think much more about it. I have lived now a long life and uh, more than half a century of that in Britain. I still think that the war years were the most dramatic and the most traumatic years of my life. Nine out of ten German soldiers who died in the whole of the Second World War died in Russia, which tells the story. When I look at the, the school photo, I would say approaching half died. When Hitler came to power in 1933, I was just 10 years old. Only one youth movement was allowed in Germany, the Hitler Youth. But I loved it, I really liked it. At least once a year, you went to camps. They were in the most beautiful places. We learned shooting. I was quite a good shot and I was proud of it. I said, boy, you love it, hmm? I remember instances when I looked into the mirror and I thought, dark hair and a good German should be burnt. And I looked at my nose from the side and I hope there's not a Jew amongst my great-grandparents. Saturday mornings we stood in front of Jewish shops and prevented people from going in. Attention! About ten! March! You belong to something for the first time in your life. It was great. Herr Schmidt, he was a neighbor of ours.
There was a feeling that uh, that wasn't right. Herr Schmidt is a nice man and to beat up a nice man uh, because he didn't salute. Thank you. But then you swallow all that and think, well, to get a decent society, maybe it's important to force people to march in steps, so to say. I saw Hitler several times at the rallies. Oh, the swastika flags and heil, 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 heil. It was just great, the euphoria. There is the greatest man on earth. I think it was 1938 where Hitler came down to the docks and several of us climbed up the tree and the tree was as the branches went down, touching the road. The Führer came and they stopped underneath our tree and uh, the SS down there tried to climb up after us. We couldn't care less. We could see the Führer. I thought he was a kind of a second god, the Führer. And how can it be that some of us, like my father, don't like him? My father was a, a laborer on the railways. He had been a soldier in the First World War. The brown of the Nazis was to him like a red cloth uh, to a bull. And now my father had put out his swastika. Don't upset him. Mr. Stebert gave him a spare flag of his and offered to put it up. What would he do? Henry! Hello, Father. I had bitter arguments with my father. And then came a time that my father did not dare to argue with me anymore. There were young lads who gave their father away, and that was enough to take people into concentration camp. He died of cancer. Just before I went to Russia in 1941, Dad, you were right, and I was the idiot. It's too late to say, I am sorry. Oh, nice. Hi. Oh, nice. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello, boy. Hello, my darling. Okay, then. Yes. Have a nice are. day. See you later. Yes, and you too. Yeah. And uh, all hey. the best. Bye, Lisa. Bye. Have a good time. You're like a monkey. But don't fall. <laughs> My father once said, maybe it's better that you are so brainwashed because otherwise it will destroy you mentally. And we went through Germany and Poland and into Russia. The German army was more professional than all its adversaries. We occupied Norway, Denmark, Holland, Belgium, Luxembourg, France, Greece, Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia, Poland, the area in the Soviet Union. nation on earth and we were more intelligent and efficient than all the others and it was our God-given duty to force our ways onto the lower orders. 
Without Judaism, there never would have been Bolshevism. Lenin founded the ideology of his leadership on the Jew, Marx. Jews, exclusively Jews, have established Soviet classes as <laughs> As they did at Smolensk, the Bolsheviks put all their eggs in one basket on the Isthmus of Perikop. But the National Socialist forces have proven that the word impossible does not exist for them. Today, OKW has reported that the enemy is now in full retreat in the Crimea, and everyone knows what that means. Rüber am Laude, Simferopol, there he drove to a village. Our commander said, crew so-and-so, that cottage, crew so-and-so, that cottage. And we took our cottage. Christ, this place stinks. I told you, you got five minutes. Out. There was some snow on the ground, and they looked so helpless. The little one couldn't even carry anything. It was small. What happened to them, I have no idea. Okay, okay. We stayed in that village for quite some time. Oh, come on. I thought, lovely country. I would like to be here on a holiday instead of coming here as an enemy. But you were afraid of saying something like that to your mates and makes them think you are a Russian lover. We were a close group in our crew. Maneuvers today were generally a success, except that I believe one panzer got stuck in the mud. Will the driver step forward? Metalman, Sir. step forward. But I didn't get stuck in the mud. I was told to stop Stand my- Stand to attention! I'm little panzer, I got stuck in the mud. Louder, Metalman. I'm a little panzer, I got stuck in the mud. It was totally unnecessary to humiliate me. I'm a little panzer, I got stuck in... I'm a little panzer, I got stuck in the mud. I'm a little panzer, I got stuck in the mud. I'm a little panzer, I got stuck in the mud. I wanted to go home, you know. <laughs> then we left the village and went to the front line. We knew now we would go into a battle. We won the Battle of Kerch. They tried to get away in little boats and we shot some to smithereens and it blew up and then, hey, hey, good shot. There is a great feeling in us males to beat the enemy, to 
village to conquer a position of the enemy and the enemy is routed. Uh, yeah. Personally, I did not want to do any harm to them, except that I wanted to kill them. I know his life is full of contradictions. Henry, you don't know whether they're coming or going. <laughs> We came back to the mainland after Crimea and joined the Sixth Army. There were thousands of villages in that area. We just peppered into them to make sure that we wouldn't get too much resistance. It was horrible for me to see that. I mean, we had done it. Hmm? I couldn't, couldn't handle it. Couldn't handle it. The decision is made by your commander. You, you don't make your own decisions. These brutalities and injustices, that is how things were. My mates were in there. None of them came out. None of them came out. They burned, burned to death in the tank. Then I was sent to a hospital. Then because I was not fit for front duty because of my wound, I was sent to the Russian prisoner camp. For a short time became a guard. Within that camp was a farm where they put the political prisoners. Anyone who walked in there and got shot. I like to talk to them, and especially with Boris. Boris was going to be shot the next morning. I felt sorry for him and sad, but I think he knew that he was going to be shot. Strasvitje, Boris. He had been to interrogation. I could see he had been hit. Stalin tipia vot etta bisha. Jo sta bois diela la etta procleate ya revolutsia. Su etta prestupna. Henry, ti haroshi chovik. Ti rabochi. Какие? И ты не дурак. Но на самом деле это вообще тот и дурак. Если даже вы выиграете войну, вашей армии не остановить революцию. Рабочий может погибнуть, но не победить. Все это когда-нибудь поймут. И когда это случится, 
Революция победит. Эта штука не убьет идею. I was glad when they declared me fit for front duty again. There were no complications to kill people and, uh, and get killed. That was easy to understand. That uh, confrontation with Boris, it upset me very much, and it still does. If I would have kept in me the confusion. I can imagine a human being can get mad. And then you're with your mates. And I wanted to forget it and, and uh, go on with my life. Perhaps I carry all this around with me. Friends say to me, loosen up, Henry. But these things on my mind because collectively somehow I'm guilty. Come on, Grandad. People say to me, you allowed Hitler to become Prime Minister. Then that revolts in me and they say, well, how can I be responsible? I didn't do it. Let us pray. Your hand, O oh God, rules over all empires and nations on this earth. Bless our German nation and infuse in our hearts love of the fatherland. May we be a generation of heroes, worthy of those who went before us. Bless the German Wehrmacht and give its members the strength to make the supreme sacrifice for Führer, Volk and Fatherland. The Russians had done wrong to murder German soldiers. In us arose a kind of hatred. If a soldier puts up his hands, you don't fight him anymore. You don't kill him. But we did. 
from then on for quite some time, we didn't take any prisoners. The whole thing becomes a quagmire of brutality. Killing the prisoners has been wiped off my mind a bit. It's not a predominant position in my remembrance. Why not? I don't know. I don't know. I can remember when we came out of Charkov, there was a battle. I remember the battle of Isium, the battle of Melitopol, of Mariupol, of Rostov, and there were many in between. Then something mm -hmm. happened to my panzer, clutch trouble. The company was to move out, so I stayed in the village. <laughs> so I was on my own. Hey! Niet! Niet! It was a very dangerous situation. My best insurance policy that uh, if something would have happened to me and the Germans come back and then find me killed, it would have burned the village. They had given me food, I think, for five days, and uh, no one came. I lived among those villages for weeks. find my bloody rifle. <laughs> you know, is Sultia losing his rifle? They were nice people and I wouldn't mind living with them for the rest of my life. But uh, these are fleeting thoughts. I went back to my unit. Several of my close comrades had died. We went on fighting. know of friends who committed suicide after the war. And they see the dead children and dead women lying about. That, that did something to many of us. I put all these things away because otherwise I would go out of my mind. Weeks and weeks go by when I don't think of it at all. I don't want any disturbing thoughts at this time of my life. I don't want to be bothered by it anymore. I don't want to say I'm sorry, which is ridiculous for the horrible things that happen to human beings. I don't want to be sad about it anymore. I am just what I am. Once snow comes down, the sounds in the air are different. There's something nice about it. I remember it was something soothing. I had lost my panzer and drove a half-track with a anti-tank gun behind me to protect the flank behind Stalingrad.
the 19th of November. they swore because they had run out of ammunition. I don't know, because they never spoke to them again. I must admit that it came instinctively to me. I got to collect all my strengths in order to save my life and get away. Help me. Please help. 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 Please. Their life didn't mean anything to me. And they shouted after me, a stinking coward. I mean, I couldn't have saved them. That's where and when I became a man. Stalingrad was a turning point of a Russian campaign. It was a turning point of the World War. And it was a point of little soldier gentlemen. Ruski! Yes, Germanski. We were in that haystack for days.
we walked to the west looking for German lines for four days or five days. We were so relieved to reach our own people. Hey. The Germans! The Germans! The Germans! The German army was retreating. There were about 180, and we joined them and marched with them. These units were called Kampfgruppen, put together battle groups. Our noses were wrapped in the dirt and the snow and we fought like devils. Up to then, I was just a, a robot. From then on, I think I became a different soldier. Everything became very personal. Pistra, 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 <laughs> There's such a fury in you. You are, I suppose, not quite normal. We're going to be okay. Franz, we're getting help. You'll be all right. Franz, you'll be all right. We couldn't carry Franz, and neither could we leave him there and let him see us just walking away from him. I had to do it. Hey, open up! Hey. Hey. Open the gates, these boys are starving. I have my what? orders and you open can't up. enter without pay. Open let us in, we have no papers. Major, open the gate. We are under strict orders not to release anything without a loading permit. Well, this is an SS order. What's an SS order? No papers, no entry. This is just too stupid to be believed. One crime after the other. Atkrivaid vier. 
Давай открывай! about thousand kilometers to walk back to Germany and we thought, well, surely we, we never get there. It was awful, it was awful. I remember some new blood came in from another unit. He was crying. And I said, what's the matter, mate? And he said, oh, go, my feet. And then he pulled his sock off and his, his foot was black. Black, you know, frozen. He couldn't get his feet anymore in his jack boots, so he walked with that foot in the snow. He was already dead. He was finished, and you and you saw the the, the hopelessness of it. Maybe I'm a bit mental from all that. Ja сейчас в части собрано из остатков. Сколько человек в твоей части? Около 130. Как обстоят дела с боеприпасами? I thought I'd tell them what, whatever they ask me. It's my life or my death here. Hmm? It was very short that I was a Russian prisoner. There was a German counter-attack, and, and they took me back, and uh, I went back to the Kampfgruppe, and more fighting. I survived through a mixture of luck and cowardice. There's a thin dividing line between good and bad. How shall we look back on the 20th century? Simon Sharma considers a thousand years of history in an hour. First on UK TV history to the Troubles in Northern Ireland, and the first in a three-part series, Loyalists. It's introduced by the award-winning journalist 